All right, 1101, real quick, what's on slate? What's on tap for this week? Week six, it is your first argumentative persuasive essay. This is the essay where you are arguing based on your own sense of logic, authority, and using emotive, strong, emotionally charged language when necessary, okay? These are the three tactics you are using. The Greek words are logos, ethos, and pathos. Logos, logic, okay? Your own sense of internal logic, intuition. Is something sensible or rational or reasonable? You are using that method of arguing your case, okay? For example, if you are having a conversation uh, with your wife and uh, she asks you to do the dishes and she is instructing you that the best way to go about doing the dishes is to hand wash each dish, okay? You, however, argue counter to that that the dishwasher itself is the better method of getting the dishes clean. Now, if you're using logos, how might you go about that? Well, you will say, it's more uh, sensible to use the dishwasher because the dishwasher has a more comprehensive way of cleaning all the dishes. It uses a, a high-powered detergent that is usually in a little uh, cartridge or uh, gel cap uh, in, in some way. And the, and the uh, mechanics of the dishwasher, uh, the jets are more powerful, it gets the dishes more clean. Whereas hand washing the dishes, you have to scrub much more intensely, you might miss things. Um, there's a, more of a chance of maybe streaking, especially when you're drying with that uh, uh, dish rag that you've used to dry 13 dishes before the one you're drying right now. So it just doesn't make any sense to hand wash and hand dry the dishes. The dishwasher does a better job, okay? So there I'm using reason to argue my case. Ethos, ethics, character, credibility, okay? So if you want to appeal, if you want to use ethos, let's say you're talking to a group of people. Okay, and you're trying to convince these people to rally behind your cause or to see things in the way that you see them. You might appeal to a sense of uh, shared values or shared character. For example, if I am talking at some convention and I am talking about uh, the need to uh, protect our right to bear arms as American citizens, I will appeal to the Second Amendment. I will say... As Americans, Americans have a right, according to the Second Amendment, based on our founding in the Constitution, to keep and bear arms. Okay, That is an appeal to ethos, a value that as Americans we all share, we are all a part of. Pathos, the third of the three, logos, ethos, pathos. Pathos, think of words like sympathy, empathy. Whereas logos, you think of logic, ethos, you think of ethics, pathos, empathy, sympathy, being pathetic. It's emotion, okay? So think about how emotion is used today to get people to adopt a certain position. The one I like to default to, the one that I actually have a real problem with, is using children to advance a political agenda. Okay, so I remember uh, the presidential election from three, four years ago. Um, there was uh, an ad, uh, I think, by the Clinton campaign, uh, and she said something, you know, criticizing Trump on his vulgarity and his uh, coarse language. And she said, our, or she didn't say, her campaign in this ad uh, said, our children are watching, as in, think of the children. Okay. I, to me, I don't, I don't like using children in that way. Uh, let's say you're driving down the highway with your wife and you see a dog. She wants to adopt the dog. Um, uh, and she says things like, think of that poor dog. It's without a home. It's starving. It's kind of pulling on the heartstrings here, uh, trying to make you sympathize with that dog's plight in an effort maybe to adopt the dog. And if you're using logic to counter that argument, you might say, well, dear, see, we can't do this. We already have two dogs as it is. We have a cat. This would mean higher food uh, bills, vet bills. We can't afford it. Okay, 
that's using logic against, that's using logos in refutation of that pathos attempt uh, from your hypothetical, theoretical wife in this situation. Okay, so just a quick little rundown on an ethos, pathos, and logos. These are the tactics you are using this week to hammer home your thesis. These are the three points of argumentation, uh, modes of argumentation you are using. No research, okay? You shouldn't be researching secondary material, okay? Because you are going to do that in a couple of weeks when it comes time for the research component. All you're doing this week is writing the classic two to three page essay uh, wherein you are arguing a point, a case, a position. And we talked about this uh, to some degree. It should be something original. It shouldn't be the same old abortion or uh, lower the drinking age, legalize marijuana. It should be something a little more topical, relevant to today's times. But think a little bit more concretely, okay, and a little bit more specific, lo local. Let's say the homeless problem in Los Angeles or San Francisco, okay? You might have a proposal or a proposition uh, how to solve or alleviate uh, that dire situation in Los Angeles and or San Francisco, okay? Uh, there's a big drug problem in at least San Francisco. Uh, heroin use is, is spiking, uh, coming back. Uh, people are finding new syringes all over the grounds. Um, so maybe you are arguing against the conditions which according to you, have uh, fostered that uh, unsavory environment there, okay? So try to think of something uh, a little more original than the tired, hackneyed uh, abortion, gun control, blah, 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 okay? If you do choose to do one of those ones that we've all heard a thousand times, try to at least adopt an original angle that we haven't heard a thousand times, okay? Or that I haven't heard a thousand times, I should say. When you are writing this essay, you want to avoid using first-person pronouns. Forget the I thinks, in my opinion, the way I see it, we, us, our. Eliminate that stuff. You want to remain objective. If you insert yourself into an argument, it starts to cheapen the validity, the legitimacy of your argument. You're making it too personal. When you make something personal, it has to do with you and not everybody, the world. You want to make your, your argument universal, not personal. When you universalize your position, you're making it sound as though anyone, everyone, should adopt that position, okay? Because we're all in it together, okay? It's universal. It applies to everybody, not just you, okay? So eliminate first-person pronouns. I shouldn't see them in the essay, okay? Uh, so same rules apply. Uh, you could use the tactics that you honed uh, use uh, doing your SEC exercises throughout last week. Um, I contributed to at least one student's discussion board post. Uh, I might do another one before today, Sunday, the 22nd is up. Um, that discussion board, of course, closes uh, the 22nd by 1159. Uh, so I might dig in there one more time just to see how the conversation's going. Uh, we do not have a blog this, or we do, I'm sorry, correction, we do have a blog this week. The blog opportunity this week allows you to comment on the Swift and Hazlitt readings uh, that you just completed. Classic blog rules apply. Uh, that, that's, that's a place for you to just kind of comment on the readings remaining uh, error-free in terms of grammar and punctuation and using professional mature uh, diction as you do that. Remember, the blog opportunities are means for you to get bonus extra credit on this research essay coming up in a few weeks, okay? So this week, just to recap, your argumentative essay that does not contain any research in which you argue your thesis based on logic, logos, ethos, ethics, character, authority, and pathos, strong emotional oomph, if you will, okay? So, 
Uh, if you have any questions on any of that, be sure to email me. I'll get around to you. Uh, I am backlogged with assignments, guys. The assignments, uh, this week I have to concentrate on your descriptives because it's the second week uh, that you uh, have turned them in. So I concentrate on essays first. Uh, those will be graded and returned to you before any of the backlogged um, class and homework. And I'm not just sitting on a hammock, uh, you know, drinking lemonade, by the way. Okay, uh, there are, uh, let's see, four in total, four, there are seven classes in total I'm teaching. So there are six other classes, not including ours. So it's just kind of the nature of the beast. I'm kind of furiously trying to grade, 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 and go to work. Uh, so it's, you guys know the the rigmarole. So I do appreciate your patience and understanding is what I mean to say. Okay. So folks, uh, have a great week six. Uh, good luck with your essay and um, talk to you again next week. Um, you might want to start looking in Galileo addendum asterisk. Uh, in Galileo, uh, in GNTC, the library section, go to Galileo because that's where you're going to have to pull the uh, research material for your research essay in a few weeks. So just go ahead and Galileo and look at the browse by subject options, okay? Things like sociology, science, technology, these subjects, broadly speaking, are gonna cover a lot of your topics, okay? Start looking in the databases, start looking for scholarly journals uh, that you might use uh, to help with your research when that comes a few weeks down the line. But you shouldn't be incorporating any of this into the paper due this week. Okay, I just wanna reiterate that. But it's not a bad idea to at least get, start to familiarize yourself uh, with at least navigating Galileo, okay? So now I will end it. Have a great week six. Talk to you next week. Peace.